So in this video we're going to look at roots of unity. Now roots of unity are important in group characters, number theory and discrete Fourier transform. That's where these are used quite a lot. Now roots of unity they are found by looking at the solution for a particular polynomial. So that is z to the power of n minus 1 equals 0. Now here n is a positive integer. So n is in the positive integers. So the solutions to this will give us our roots of unity. So for example here z to the n minus 1, our solutions to this in exponential form will be e to the 2 pi i k over n. So that's our indice of the exponential. That will give us the result to give us our roots of unity for this particular polynomial. Now another way we can write that is writing cosine of 2 pi k over n plus i sine 2 pi k over n. That will also be the way of finding our roots of unity for this. Okay, so here, our k, we've got a new uh, value here. So k is basically 0, 1, all the way up to n minus 1. So that's what we've got to find our roots of unity. Okay, now what we want to look at now is look at an example of our roots of unity and then what we'll do is we'll see how we find our primitive roots of unity. Okay, so for n equals 6, let's have a look at the exponential form of this solution. That's going to be quicker to work with than using this Euler identity. So for n equals 6, our k is from 0 to 5. Let's just write them all down. So we've got e to the 2 pi i, 0 over 6, e to the 2 pi i, 1 over 6, e to the 2 pi i, 2 over 6, e to the 2 pi i, 3 over 6, e to the 2 pi i, 4 over 6, and finally e to the 2 pi i, 5 over 6. Now it's important to look at them in this way when trying to see which one of these will form something called the primitive root of unity. Now a primitive root of unity, if we look in terms of k and n, what we want is the greatest common divisor of k and n to be just 1. So basically we want k and n to be co-prime. Now, if we look along here and see where k and n is co-prime, they will be examples of the primitive roots of unity for, in this case, z to the 6 minus 1. So here, let's just write this z to the 6 minus 1. That's kind of what we're looking at at the moment. So this one here, 0, that's not a primitive root of unity. 1 and 6 are co-prime, so that's primitive. 2 and 6 is not, 3 and 6 is not, 4 and 6 is not, so these are not primitive. And 5 and 6, that is co-prime, so they are the primitive roots of unity. So if I write these down here now, so now we've got e to the 2 pi i over 6, and this one here, we've got e, well here we've got 5 twos are 10, so that's 10 pi i over 6. Now we just simplify these off and put them into the correct values for our indice. This one here will give us e to the pi i over 3. And this one here, now 10 pi i over 6, as we've got 6 in our denominator of our indice, if we subtract 12 we'll get e to the minus 2 pi i over 6, which gives us our conjugate of this one which is e to the minus pi i over 3. So these will be our primitive roots of the solution when n equals 6. Now one interesting characteristic we will notice from this is if k and n have to be co-prime, 
That means then when n is a prime number, all of our terms here will be primitive roots. So all of them will be primitive roots. So if n is prime, all are primitive roots. And that will be except for when k equals zero. Okay, right. Now what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to take this off the board and we're going to look at the relationship between roots of unity and cyclotomic polynomials. Okay. Okay, so let's have a look at now the relationship between roots of unity and cyclotomic polynomials. Now let's have a look at here for n equals 6 as we did in the previous example. So for n equals 6, we want to know the cyclotomic polynomial for z to the power of 6 minus 1 equals 0. So z to the 6 minus 1 equals 0. Now if we factor this out, we'll get z minus 1, because we know positive 1 is a solution to this equation, and also negative 1 is a solution to this equation. So we write z plus 1, and then we'll get z squared plus z plus 1, and z squared minus z plus 1. So that would be our cyclotomic polynomial representation of this one here for n equals 6. So let's just look with this for the moment. Now what we're looking for here is the solutions to this when this equals 0. Okay. So we've got z minus 1 equals 0, we've got z plus 1 equals 0, and we've got z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0, and z squared minus z plus 1 equals 0. Okay, well, first two are pretty straightforward. z equals 1, z equals minus 1, and then here we will get, for this one, we will get z equals minus a half and then plus or minus the square root of minus 3 over 2. And then for this one into the quadratic formula, we get z equals 1 half plus or minus square root of minus 3 over 2. OK, now you can see here these two here are going to give us complex solutions. And they are conjugate to each other because they will be reflected in the real axis. OK, so now what I can do is I can draw, the, draw these on the Arjand diagram. So if I've got my real axis and imaginary axis, so that's my imaginaries, that's my reals. I've got plus and minus one. So that goes on here. That's my plus one. That's my minus one and they are always equally spaced on the unit circle as we go around the diagram. So here we've got minus one half, so that's going to be around here, and then plus or minus, minus square root of minus three over two, so that will be here, and the same here with minus square root of root three over two, and this one here with a half, it's going to be reflected on this side. So that's going to be our four solutions in the complex values and our plus or minus one as shown here on the real axis. Okay so now what we will see here now if we put these in terms of our exponential value here we'll have so here we've got plus one so we've got e to the zero. This one is e to the pi i over three. This one is e to the two pi i over three. This one here, we've got e to the minus pi i over 3. And here we've got e to the minus 2 pi i over 3. And we said before that our primitive roots of our equation are this one here, e to the pi i over 3. So this is primitive. So let's put a solution. And our other primitive root was this one, which was e to the 5 pi i over 6, which we simplified down to e to the minus pi i over 3. So this one here was our other primitive root. 
So that's our primitive roots of unity for a polynomial z to the n minus 1. Now in the next video, I'll have a look at the primitive roots of a value for n when n is 17 or 15 or 12 and something like that. Okay.